MBLC, how are we doing this morning? Woo! Woo -woo! Let's rise and praise the Lord. Yes. Let's worship.
happy and excited to be here this morning. our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. conquered the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things
you and to praise you and to give you honor and glory and I pray God that this service today will do that that people will just walk close to you that the name of Jesus will go deep into our hearts and that when we leave this place we'll be people who have been changed because we've spoke the name of Jesus and we've worshiped you and we we've given him honor and glory so we thank you father and in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. thank you. you may have a seat great to have you guys here today 
Uh, I'm Pastor Clint, and uh, just want to remind you of the a couple of things. Uh, this is first of the worship guides that you get every week, and and so uh, make sure you fill out the connection card. That doesn't change. Uh, if your contact information has changed, you've got prayer requests. You want to fill that out. You want to make sure this. So today and for the next two weeks after is our at the movies series, and so you get this. Uh, I, I tried to email people, I tried to Facebook people, I tried to text people, I tried every which way to let you know, if you can get here at 10, uh, 10, 10, well, 10, 15, and then get your seats by 10, 10, we have an at the movies pre-service trivia that goes, and they're, what's that, or 10, 20, I said, 10, 20, yeah, get here at 10, 15, we start at 10, 10, right, 10, 15, and I am a math person too, <laughs> 10, 15, at 10, 20, we start this pre-service trivia music you hear the soundtracks and you get this form and you just listen to the soundtrack and you try to wonder what movie that was and we even give you some hints on the back of what movies you're even listening to so you fill that out and then the idea is in a few minutes we're going to collect those and the person each Sunday who who gets the most of these uh, on a given Sunday like today uh, you're gonna, we have a prize for you okay and that's coming up in just a minute and we are doing our series called at the movies and so this series is designed for people it's designed for everybody I say it, it's cookies on the lower shelf so everybody can eat so our services are always try designed for you to invite your pe your friends that might not go to church or might have been away from the church for a while maybe they're struggling in their spiritual life better our services are designed for them okay if you're a mature believer you've been in the word 30 years you're, you've been growing in your faith and all of that you might think well those messages that you know those aren't really i don't get a whole well guess what they're for people to to you invite your friends so that we want you to invite people and this series is a great series to invite people so use your invite cards or on guest services table let people know that we got this series going on and Watch them come in, have them come in and just watch the power of God, what God can do in a, in a service like this. So and having said that, we'll give you a little flavor now. Uh, we're going to do our, we're going to kind of launch into some of our At The Movie series stuff. And the first thing we've got is some trivia. But before we start the trivia, trivia we got this to kind of get you going into the movie series uh, theme. Okay, here you go. Bottom, 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 bottom
All right, looks like we have a tie. So, Aubrey and Amy, come on out. Okay, so now we have our trivia time, and where'd you guys go? Yeah, you're, you're facing off against each other. Yes? Oh, two different people, all right. You want to come up and play trivia? Anybody else? You want to volunteer? Come on out, sweetie. Yep, come on, stand up here on the platform. My first time, in case you can't hear, in case you can't tell, you can't talk either. All right, so what I'm going to ask is I'm going to start with this. This is the name of a movie, all right? I'm going to give you some clues. As soon as you think you know it, shout out, okay? Shout out. All right, this was the fifth, according to, uh, um, I write that down. This one's good. Oh, yeah. 
2022 adjusted for inflation according to uh so we're gonna go this way it made 3.165 billion dollars nope came out in 2019 it was the final movie in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Nope. It was the 22nd and final movie. Got a yes? Nope. All right. Avengers. Endgame. Oh. All right. This is the number four all-time money-making movie. It uh, grossed $3.44 billion. Came out in 1977. Nope. It was the first movie to come out in this saga, but it was actually episode number four. The cast and crew, believe it or not, thought the movie would be a, f uh, f would be a failure. Nope. Features... Uh, some guy named Luke Skywalker. Star Wars. Star Wars. There you go. Hold on to that. That's your official counter. Yeah, just start throwing names out. You, you embarrassed? No? Okay. This was the number three movie of all time. $3.4 billion. Came out in 1997. Based on the account of the ship that God, God himself couldn't even sink. Titanic. Very good. And we have the number two all-time moneymaker. At $3.82 billion. Came out in 2009. James Cameron was the writer, director, and co-producer. Featured 10-foot blue... Uh, Creatures. Avatar. There you go. All right. If you get this one, then we got to do the fingers thing again, okay? All right. So this is the all-time money-making movie. Uh, this now this when I say all-time money-making, this includes lunch pails, thermoses, action figures, uh, toilet paper, you name it. All right. Four point one nine billion. Came out in 1939. 1939. Oh. Let's see. Set in the American South against the backdrop of the Civil War. Gone with the Wind. Very good. You win. <laughs> All right. So thank you for playing. We have snow caps for you. Yep. Give me the card. I gotta remind myself not to drink so much coffee next time. And here is a ten dollar gift certificate to Bigby. Bigby, Bigby Coffee. All right, so give him a hand for playing.
everybody, I'm Aubrey and I get to serve on our worship team. We are excited to have you in church with us today. Today we begin our At The Movie series. These are services that feature movies with a redemptive message which our pastor illustrates through solid biblical teaching. an at the movies photo booth, free sodas, popcorn, and giveaway prizes during this series. Be sure to pick up some invite cards and invite your friends to this series. One of our favorite things here at Better Life is helping people discover their purpose, and we do that during our monthly growth track. We believe that God gave every one of us gifts and talents to fulfill the specific purpose he created us for. The first Sunday of the month, we have our growth track. If you would like to learn more about Better Life's vision, mission, and values, or you want to know more about discovering God's purpose for your life, then we invite you to attend this 90-minute class taught by our pastor. You can learn more about our growth track by visiting betterlifepeople.com. You can register by filling out the connection card and placing it in the offering buckets later in the service. This Tuesday, October 31st, our Elevate Student Ministry team will be hosting our second annual Trunk or Treat. If you would like to participate, please contact Pastor Clint, Amy Beisler, Pete Cardos, or Crystal Green. If you cannot attend but would like to donate candy, you can leave your candy donation at the guest services table. At Better Life, we believe that we are better when we are together, such as in small groups. Our small groups are currently underway. For more information on small groups, you can visit betterlifepeople.com or you can complete your connection card for more information, including registering for a group. For those who want to enhance their prayer life, we offer our Saturday prayer service each Saturday at 10 a.m. in the worship center. This is a time of worship and praying on behalf of others. Believe it or not, it's time to begin thinking about Christmas. We have three events to prepare for that time. First, we have Operation Christmas Child. This is a time when we donate gifts to children overseas by sending gifts in the Christmas shoebox. If you would like to participate in Operation Christmas Child, please visit our website, betterlifepeople.com, or by filling out a connection card. Secondly, we are having our second annual Christmas production, The Heck of Big and Shiny Crown. This is for adults and kids. If you would like to participate in this, leave a note on the connection card and we'll make sure you receive more information. Third, we are hosting a movie night on Monday, December 18th. We will be having some Christmas worship songs and enjoy the short movie, The Innkeeper's Dream. We're so glad you're with us today. Now here's our pastor to share God's word with us. If you let my daughter go now, that will be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. Kill you. Whoa, 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 what? This is heavy. What year is this? Do you want to build a snowman? Jeez, kid, no. I'm on the phone. I'm trying to get back to the future. How about you make like a tree and get out of here? Let it go. There's a storm coming, and I am your reckoning. Does anyone have a cough drop? <clears throat> Do you want to build a snowman? Yes! Yeah! You want some?
All right. So welcome. Uh, glad you guys are here today. Uh, if you need message for your messages, if you need a Bible or a pen, just raise your hand. We can get you one for taking notes. Really encourage taking notes. You know, we have provided some great series for you guys. And I, I just really pray that you'll just make sure you're here every week because some of these series uh, have been really designed for you. We had, we did, in September, we did the You Asked For It series. And that was based on when you filled out that survey on Easter Sunday. And I said, what kind of movies, what kind of things, not movies, what kind of topics would you like me to preach about? And you guys gave me your answers. And we had four messages based on what you answered. And we called it You Asked For It because that's what you did. You asked for it. And we just got done talking about... Uh, uh, this last series, which was an all-church book read. We had books on the back. By the way, there's extra books. It's called What's the Point? And um, uh, if you didn't get a book, they're out on the guest services table. So before you leave today, take one. They're free. And so we did a series on that. And now we are into uh, At the Movies for the next three weeks. I want to mention, though, we have coming up uh, 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 some stuff in the, uh, just kind of around the corner here. On November, Sunday, November 19th, in the evening... We're having our praise, prayer, and pie night. And that is going to be at 5 o'clock on Sunday evening, November 19th. It's the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And it's a, just a time where we come into the room and we talk about what we're thankful for. We have communion together. And we have a little worship. And then we go out and we eat pies. It's just awesome. It's really great. And then and Monday night, November 20th, not for everybody, but you can pray about this. It's for our dream team. Those are our volunteers um, who, who serve every week. Uh, we want to appreciate them. And so we're having a Dream Team Appreciation Night on Monday night, November 20th. And we're, of course, having a lot of our Elevate students there because we want to uh, show appreciation to those that serve God faithfully in that way. So th we're not about, it's about showing gratitude and about honoring people. Honor is a big value here at Better Life Church. So anyway, just a little announcement about that. But welcome to week number one. You're here. I'm here. So let's get into this. Uh, this movie theme, and now the idea is... We don't just do cutesy little movies to suck people in, okay? But we do want people to come to church, and we know that movies often offer what we call redemptive themes. We can see redemption in a lot of movies that apply, that the scriptures talk about. And so that's what we do. That's why I say these are great, great messages for people to, to be invited to. So the first one that we're going to do is a movie called, that we're going to examine this morning, is called Remember the Titans. And it's a movie based on a 1971 football team. I'm not going to say a lot about it right now. I got this opening clip for you to watch. All right, so this is football, okay? In fact, this is football season. So how many U of M fans do I have in the house, huh? All right. And how many Michigan State, unless you Spartans, they're not really saying a whole lot this year, are they? No. And then I got my Ferris State Bulldogs. You know, they're, they're not in competition with those teams. But, you know, it's football season, and anybody who's ever watched the game of football knows that the difference between winning teams and losing teams, it's not always about talent, it's not always about ability, it's not always about desire or determination. It's often about those that can come together and, and uh, over conflict, over differences that they have with one another and work together as a team. It's getting two sides to come together and that's a whole lot harder than it looks. And that's the story of this team here, of this movie, uh, Remember the Titans. It's a true story. It's based on a true story of events that took place in Alexandria, Virginia. And the year was 1971. A brand new, what we called desegregated high school, T.C. Williams High School. Desegregated. Now, for those of you that don't know what that means, is in the South, schools used to be segregated. Blacks went to these schools, whites went to these schools, they were separate. That's how it used to be in our culture. This was the first in that area desegregated school where blacks and whites were coming together in public education. That was the year. And so this team is now facing maybe what that school experience. By the way, I didn't mean, we have popcorn and sodas, and you're more than welcome to have popcorn right during the service and your soda. More than welcome. It's, it's at the movies. All right, so uh, conflict. Conflict. Um, I don't know if you've ever had a full-scale conflict with somebody. Usually it escalates, though, in stages. It, it comes in stages. It usually begins with something relatively minor, and then distance happens. I, I told you a number of weeks ago that my dad, I had an uncle and my dad had a conflict 
started out as a minor thing, and they ended up not speaking to one another for 10 years, for 10 years. A disagreement, and then there's distance that happens between you, a distance of thought, a distance of belief, <coughs> a distance of attitude, or maybe just neglect. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in people's marriages. I've seen it with parents. I've seen it with their kids. And we've all seen it in society with race and prejudice. So like in the movie. And here's a thought for you. Uh, time doesn't heal. It just adds distance. Some people think, well, no, time, you know, in time. Now, I get it. Sometimes if there's a heated argument, you may want to take a moment to gather yourself. But even the Bible says that we are not to go to the bad angry. In other words, because then you, you, you leave room for the devil to come in and plant other thoughts, and, and then the wall grow, things grow. So time doesn't heal. It just simply adds distance. Any conflict and distance that's unresolved, it escalates. It, it becomes like a wall. It just gets higher and higher and higher and more and more difficult to overcome. And then you get to a point like my dad and my uncle where 10 years finally because neither one of them was humble enough to want to climb that wall and break it down and get back into a relationship with one another. And, and you can get critical of one another. You can become belittling. You, be, you, you begin to believe things about other people that's certainly about the other person that's not true. That's what can happen with unresolved conflict. I remember talking to a guy one time who had conflict with his spouse, his wife. And uh, he said to me, she kept just she, just, she just got historical. I go, no, you mean hysterical. No, she got historical. She brought up everything in my past, every single thing that I did wrong. She mentioned it. See, that's what conflict, unresolved, does. And we see this in this movie. And if you've been there, and maybe you're in one now, I don't know, but let me tell you, the most dangerous conflict that you can have is to have conflict with God. And, and in 30 years of ministry, I've seen people in conflict with God. They have a conflict. They're not where they want to be. They're not maybe where they should be spiritually. So what happens is instead of drawing closer and toward, toward God or the church or what God has put in place for people, people separate and, and, and they get removed. In fact, there's three things that separate us. Uh, that create uh, because of conflict. There's three things that separates that causes the conflict. Here's the first one for your notes. Neglect separates us. Neglect separates us. When we neglect God, okay, just in, in a relationship, when, when you neglect a relationship, another person in a relationship, there's conflict. Um, it, it creates that. Uh, it's not that there's anything wrong, but you just got away from God. And, and so when you neglect God, your, life, your spiritual life just kind of falls apart. You're not who you, used to, you, you, who you should be. I've always said to people, where you put time, things that you give time and attention to will flourish, all right? It'll, it'll flourish. Uh, you know, if you just look at, uh, in principle, like um, weeds, <laughs> weeds growing up around, like I told you guys a few, uh, a while ago that I, that I uh, outside of my shed, I put this nice white rock all around that looks nice, but if I don't keep up on it, weeds will come up. Even though I put a weed barrier down, weeds will keep creeping up. So you give time and, and attention. And when you give time and attention to things, they're good. And it's the same true in relationships, and it's true with your relationship with God. All right? Anytime you get away from him, you know, you always feel like you're in a desert place. You always feel like in a desert place, a dry place where things aren't working like. You need to get close to God again. You don't want to separate from him. You, you can't neglect God. You need to be in that close relationship. The psalmist said it this way, but they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his counsel in the desert they gave into their craving. Talking about the people of God in the Old Testament, the people of Israel. They, they forgot what he had done, okay? And they did not wait for his counsel. And they went through a dry desert time in their life. And, and when we, we neglect God, then we, we find that we, we get caught into life. It's, it's kind of like people. I see this when I referee. I see athletes when I'm refing. Sometimes there's, a, there's some physicality in the basketball game, and one player reacts to another player, and, and they start saying words to each other, or worse, they, 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 get, they get physical with one another, or the coach just loses it on the sideline. And I'll go over, because remember referees, we have to be the calming influence out there. 
and you go and when you talk to them after they have blown up, then they say, you know, as you probably you probably know what I'm going to say. I just got caught in the moment. It's the heat of the moment type of thing. Heat of the moment. I'll never forget. But sometimes that heat of the moment can be very difficult. I remember, you know, I'd been officiating, and then my wife and I, we moved out to Iowa for, to pastor, and I was out in Iowa years ago. And then later when we returned to Michigan, I got back into officiating again. And I remember officiating a game in which uh, a fellow classmate of mine that I went to school with, their kids were playing in the game, and they would just get caught in the heat of the moment. And I, and I remember, as in refer we hear everything that people say. People think they, when you yell out, we don't hear. We hear. <laughs> we hear. We process. But then we let, let it go, you know, like the movie, let it go. Okay. So I remember him saying, I remember hearing from the crowd, go back to Iowa, you know, type of thing. People get, they, they get lost in that. And that's because of neglect in your life. So how do you keep uh, from, how do you keep neglect in out of, the, out of your life. How do you, you, know, you don't want to neglect God, so how do you keep it out of your life? Well, you get in the Word. You pray. You listen to podcasts. Listen to messages. Uh, you get together with other Christians who are growing. People who will point you to God, not away from God. All right? So that's how we overcome uh, neglect. Here's the second thing I think that uh, separates us. Disappointment separates us. Disappointment. Uh, some people are in conflict with God because of disappointment. You think God has let you down. Or some people think the church has let you down. Or, or maybe you've doubted if, if things were real and so on. And by the way, people will let you down. People will let you down. Uh, in 30 years of ministry, I see people come to church. They get excited. People come to church. They get excited. They go through the growth track. Uh, they get excited of what they're going to do. And then they disappear. They disappear. And so Michelle and I learned something valuable, and that is while we love people and we think the best about people, I know that if I put my faith in people over God, people will let us you down. Michelle and I realized that. In fact, I, I shared with you uh, last week or the week before that Michelle and I were out because I was talking about a donkey mission. You'll have to read the book if you don't know what I'm talking about or watch my other messages, uh, previous messages. But Michelle and I were on this donkey mission between 1982 and 1985, just kind of seeking out. I was preparing for ministry, and we were just kind of wondering how life was going. And, and, and then our marriage kind of took a hit, and we were talking about one another. And we finally came together, and we were praying together. You see, we both put supreme and overwhelming and maybe unfair expectations on the other person. I had put my hope and my trust in Michelle, and she had put her hope and trust in me. And we learned that... Even as even married people, uh, your partner will let you down. Now it's not that you don't want to think the best about them, but but your but your spiritual and your emotional hopes and aspires and everything you need that needs to be rooted in God, because people will let you down. You don't want people to let you down. You don't want to think bad things about people. But just know, anchor your faith and your trust in God. He will never disappoint. And yet sometimes people think. That is true. Um, sometimes people will say to God things like, I remember when 9-11 hit. Many of you, some of you weren't born then, but it was when the Twin Towers went down. Oftentimes people will say, where was God when that happened? Or today with what's going on in Israel, all right, people might be saying, where's God in all of that, you know? Um, people do that. Michelle and I did that. Uh, you know, we went through the book, The Donkey Mission. The Donkey Mission is where you're, you're going through life and you're, and you're wondering, what's the point, God? I'm like, I'm going from here and I want to go, but what's the point in me experiencing? You know, and you, and, you, and you question God. That's what Job did. Job questioned God. Just read the book of Job. He didn't know why he had, the, he had this tor time of torment that he was going through. And he questioned God. Uh, my Wednesday night Bible book study, we will return to this book that we've been reading called The Land Between. And it's based off the story of the people of Israel when they were coming out of, with Moses, um, they were coming out of Egypt and they wanted to go into a new land, that land over there, that good land that God had for them. But they were here and there was a desert in between, the land between. And sometimes it's very difficult to go from here 
to get there and we ask God, what's the point? Or we, ask, we question God and ask God, why? Why do I have to go through this desert? Why, you know, that type of thing. See, the psalmist said it this way. Why, O Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? So neglect can separate us. Disappointment also separates us. Now, how do we keep disappointment out of our life? Well, of course, I could say be in the word, and that's true. We need to get the word in us. You need to be in the word so the word's in you because that's what builds your faith. Um, and, but you need, to be, you need to be praying. You need to be thinking. You need to get your mind on good thoughts. You need, like when you go through seasons of your life, uh, and I teach this in our Saturday prayer, <clears throat> you need to just kind of anchor. You need to be in the word. Let God give you some thoughts from the word and then hold on to those verses. I'll give you an example. Like right now in my se current season of our church and my life right now, here's some scripture that God has given me. For example, Jeremiah 29, 11, which is basically what we taught our kids in our summer blast, goes like this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future, Jeremiah 29, 11. But I'm also claiming and holding on to Philippians 1, 6. It says, being confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. And don't be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, present your request to God so that the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all your needs according to his glorious riches. 1 John 4.4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And the ones I'm really anchoring on, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. In Galatians 6, 9, and let us not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not quit. You see, scriptures like that that God gives to you in seasons of your life, commit it to memory. And when you do, that's how you can drive away disappointment. Because disappointment will knock at your door. Neglect will knock at your door. And that's how you drive it away. We have our praise, prayer, and pie night coming up. You heard me talking about what a great night for coming in the Sunday before Thanksgiving and just sharing gratitude and blessing for what God has done for you. That's how you drive neglect out of your life, being thankful. We're, we're having, like I said, Dream Team Appreciation Night for our Dream Teamers and for some of our Elevate students because we, we want them to learn about how to gr have gratitude and how to honor people and show appreciation because that's how you drive uh, neglect and, and, um, and doubt away and disappointment away. Y if you want to get disappointment out of your life, just serve other people. Like the week of Thanksgiving, go down to Mel Trotter and serve Thanksgiving dinners. My wife and I have done that several times in our life. We did it with our family. We've done it in ministry. Just go down and serve Thanksgiving dinners. Or if you can't get away, here's something easy. Go stuff a shoebox, <laughs> okay? Stuff a shoebox. Get one of those decorative Christmas boxes. Go to the dollar store and buy a bunch of little things that you can fill it up with. Maybe put a little note about who you are and send that off. let us send that off to a kid in another country. It'll bless them. And when you do it, you get the blessing, and it drives out neglect, and it drives out disappointment. The third thing that separates us is sin. Sin separates us. Sin is simply going your own way. It's doing your own thing. It's, you're probably realizing, it, it's when you realize that things, the way you want to go, aren't really working out well for you. Isaiah the prophet said it this way, in Isaiah 59, 2, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you. The word iniquities there just simply means lawlessness, lawless. Uh, we become a law unto ourselves. And what happens in the movie, uh, two groups are full of pride and they just made up their own rules. Like, we're going to do it this way. But like Coach Boone, played by Denzel Washington, as you saw, 
Coach Boone is, is trying to bring two sides together. He's trying to bring them together. And that's what Jesus does. Jesus tries to bring people together. Because there's conflict between us and God without Jesus. We are in conflict with God without Jesus. And Jesus came to bring us uh, together. Like getting on that bus. They're going to get on the bus. That's how we get rid of conflict. As we come together through Jesus. Jesus was completely innocent, but he took the blame. He paid our bill. He settled the score so that we could be close to God. Here's some scriptures that talk about that. Ephesians 2 says it this way. But now in Christ Jesus. Now you got to read Ephesians 2, the first few verses, where he talks about our life before Christ. You're dead and you're dead, doomed, disobedient, depraved, on a downward spiral. But then he says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Timothy writes in, in this, in 1 Timothy, this is the Living Bible. God longs for all to be saved and to understand the truth. God is on one side and all the people on the other side. And Christ Jesus himself is bestowed, is between them together by giving his life for all mankind. And then 1 Peter 3, for Christ died for our sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. Simply put, Jesus is the bridge between us and God. And here's a warning, and you, you can't wait, don't put this off. Make sure that you ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior because he is the one that brings us close to God. Sometimes it takes a crisis for people to change. Yeah, wake-up call that sometimes you need. Okay, so this is the last clip I'm going to show. There's a crisis that brings them together. And then we'll watch this. So neglect, coming together and winning. That's what it's about. Neglect will separate us disappointment will separate us and sin can separate us if the worship team wants to come up for some people maybe here this morning maybe there's some guilt that's kind of going on in your life maybe you've let neglect in your life you've just neglected your relationship with God you haven't you know you haven't paid attention to it like the weeds coming out of the rocks you, just need, you need to give time and attention to your relationship with God you need to give him time and build that relationship Perhaps disappointment. Perhaps there's been disappointment in your life. Maybe you felt like God disappointed you or the church disappointed you or maybe other people have disappointed you. But listen, God will never disappoint. And so you want to get those scriptures in your, in your life. You want to think about what God says to you and about you. And I, I, I've only shared scripture that is meaningful to me. You've got to find the scriptures that are meaningful to you and, and anchor them and hang on to them because that will drive out disappointment. And for some... Maybe there's some that just simply, you know, sin is in your life and you, you've let it block you and God and you're not, you're not related to him. You don't know him as your savior. Jesus is the one. Jesus is the bridge over troubled waters. Jesus is the bridge that connects people to God. Because that's the only way you can ever go to heaven is by asking Jesus Christ. Jesus paid the price. He settled the bill. By faith, you just simply need to receive what he's done. I think many of you have done that. Put your faith in him. Surrender to him. The Apostle Paul said it this way. Last scripture. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this word today, done in a little bit different fashion, God, using movie clips. But the clips really teach us, God, that conflict comes because we've neglected you we've neglected our spiritual relationship and we have conflict or conflict comes like in the movie there's disappointment people disappointed with one another and we've had maybe a disappointment in our life and maybe it's we've had disappointment with you God we've had disappointment with the church We've had disappointment with other family members or friends or spouse. 
I pray, God, that today as a result of considering this movie and your word, that each person here this morning will want to move closer to you, will no longer neglect you, no longer let disappointment reign and rule. We're going to let your word into our life, and we're going to think good thoughts. We're going to anchor on those. So, Father, that's our prayer as a church family. We're coming to you, Father, and we are pledging to you today no longer will neglect be a part of our life, no longer will disappointment be a part of our life. And sin, though we may know you as Savior, we're not even going to let it come into our life to keep us from growing in our faith. We're going to become all that you want us to be, God, because Jesus truly brings us together with you. We love you, we praise you, and thank you. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So just a couple reminders as the ushers get ready to receive our tithes and offerings. Uh, the connection card. You can fill it out. Many of you, I think, have. But if you have a prayer, prayer request, you can fill it out on the card and put that in the offering buckets. And if for some reason you don't think of it now, but you think about after we've done this, you can fill one out later, and there's a, a bucket at the guest services table for you to do that as well. Our growth track is next Sunday night. It's the, always the first Sunday of the month at 5 o'clock. That's where I talk about our vision, our mission, our values. Also, next Sunday is a baptism Sunday. We baptize the first uh, Sunday of the month, right here in our, at the end of our service. If you've never been water baptized before and you would like to be water baptized because you're not going to neglect your life anymore, your spiritual life, you're going to move closer and you're just going to say publicly, I belong, I have decided, I'm going to be all that God wants me to become. We'll, we'll baptize you next, next Sunday, all right? Just got to let me know. You can fill that out on the card or you can just come up to me after the service and let me know that as well. Let's pray over our tithes and offerings. Father, thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, Lord, that you bless us so much and so well. And uh, you, there's such a blessing, Father, when we return to you of our finances, we return to you in a way that you have blessed us. So, Lord, I pray that you'll receive this time of offering. It's a time of worship. We worship you. We praise you. We love you. And we're returning in a manner in which you have blessed us. Use these tithes and offerings, Father, to continue to get the gospel out to people. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. And as they're passing the offering bucket, stand, stand together and join the worship team in the last song.
right, just a couple reminders. So uh, tomorrow night, no Elevate tomorrow night. Just to make sure kids know. And let your kids know if you're not here. Um, no Elevate tomorrow night. But Tuesday night, 6 o'clock, Elevate is happening <clears throat> out in the parking lot. We'll have trunk or treat. We'll have games. If you know kid, that people that have little kiddos and they want to trick or treat and they want to do it in a safe environment, Tuesday night here, 6 o'clock out front. Small groups are going on this week. Saturday is Saturday prayer. Thank you for coming today. Enjoy pop, more popcorn and refreshments and some fellowship. Have a great day.